I think if we go to the U UNH or Global mm -hmm. Fund, etc., they probably will tell us that they already are discussing human dignity. I don't think we are being a little bit more specific as to what human dignity is defined, how we define it. But I think, uh, uh, and I, you and I were talking about the fact that that we. You know, at the bank, you don't spend too much time talking about definitions because there is a moment where you just need to be operational. You say, okay, fine, let's agree on an operational definition that allows us to go out with loans and support countries. So if you go to the UN, uh, UNAIDS, which will be the uh, vehicle to discuss these kind of issues, uh, they will already, I think, tell us, we, I already, we already discussed this. What we could do is to say now, can you, in your discussion about human rights, can you actually be more explicit in using this human uh, dignity terminology? Uh, as you know, in my paper, one of the one of the propos uh, propositions I made is that the, that to a certain extent, a, a human dignity can also be considered an outcome of human rights, meaning that if you implement um, law and legislation um, and all the social changes, because we know that law and legislation is necessary, but it's not sufficient to achieve change. You have social interventions as well. Uh, then that human rights is such an amorphous, broad, macro level intervention that one can say that one outcome that we, how do we know that there is respect for human rights? Well, because the, there is human dignity, there is no stigma, there is no discrimination. So I am positing that yes, that might be a way to, to look at it, that also is easier for some of the international agency to see, aha, then I can do something about this, as opposed to just only having a law. So th this concept that necessary but not sufficient, I think, uh, and the fact that one can be the outcome of the other, I think that that is that is good, uh, especially because we can. There is a measure of human dignity. There is something called the Human Dignity Index, and 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 there are the, in the paper data that shows that there are more than hundred countries right now that has punitive laws against any of these behaviors, where it is uh, drug use or is sex work or is men um, has sex with men. More than 100. One study in Africa alone, out of 11 countries, nine have punitive laws. One didn't say anything, and only one South Africa had, uh, uh, you know, anti-discrimination and anti-stigma law. I mean, and we are in the 21st century, so it is, you know, it is very important, and this is something that you can take action about, um, and that I think is also a way to. Uh, uh, in my experience, international agencies are reluctant sometimes to, even though we don't think so, but to engage in discourse for discourse sake. So this is the tension with the action. So what do we do about it? But then nobody knows exactly how to handle it. And that's what, for me, was the tension. Mm -hmm. But uh, so you, dis you engage in, in discourse as a way to be able to engage in a more productive way, in a more critical way, in a more strategic way.